thank you for joining us today. Today, we're going to be looking about why we need Christmas. But I encourage you to take time during this Christmas season to read through the Christmas story several times because I think it is important that you do that. But before we do that, we're going to take a moment just to worship the Lord. So enter in to worship. Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain Jesus Christ is born Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain Jesus Christ is born While shepherds kept their watching Behold, throughout the heavens, there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Christ is born. Oh, the shepherds feared and trembled when low upon the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. Jesus Christ is born. sent out salvation all oh, that blessed Christmas morn go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain Jesus Christ is born oh go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain Jesus Christ is born, Jesus Christ is
What a joy it is to worship the Lord. Today, as we talk about why we need Christmas, we're going to be looking in Luke 1 and 2. You know, Christmas brings a lot of stress. It brings emotional and financial stress. It brings stress about decorating and and getting gifts and gathering and travel and all these things kind of add pressure to our life. Sometimes we're just tempted to, I just want to skip Christmas. You know, John Grisham had a book out called Skipping Christmas, and it was made into a movie called Christmas with the Cranks. And if you watched that movie and saw Tim Allen, it's kind of the lesson that we learn from it is that it's kind of impossible to skip Christmas. You can't, you can't really do it. And I don't think we ought to. I think we ought to enjoy the season and remember. And if there was ever a time that we need Christmas, it, it is today. Uh, not that the not the commercial trappings of Christmas of the season, but the real wonder and the truth of the season. And we're going to look at those things today. J.B. Phillips said this. I find this a great mystery and a great wonder. God has been here on the planet in person. We are celebrating. Let me do that again, Amy. John John B. Phillips said this. I find this a great mystery and a great wonder. God has been here on this planet in person. What we're celebrating is not the feast of Old Father Christmas or Good King Winsela or even a beautiful fairy tale. We are celebrating the visit of God. How marvelous. And and it is marvelous to think about. We are celebrating the visit of God himself to here with us. And there are many reasons that we need Christmas. And the true meaning of Christmas, we need Christmas because we need to know that, first of all, God came looking for us. That's an amazing thought to think about. God came looking for you and me. In John 1 14 it says this, the word became flesh and was made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. You know, most of the religions around the world have a concept 
that God is kind of elusive. And that he's hard to find. And, but if you do these steps, perhaps you'll find him. Even if you miss him in this life, maybe you'll find him in the next life. Christianity presents a whole different picture. God is looking for you. The God who made everything around us is looking for you. He revealed himself to us, and he came to look for us. And before we could even look, he's not hiding. He's out and open. He wants to be known. He wants to be found. That's a great thing, it, that God came looking for you and me, that he, he, he's looking for us. The second thing is God loves us. You know, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but he have eternal life. Max Lucado said this, If you ever wondered what the motive of God was in sending his Son, here it is. He loves us, and he wants us to live, with, live forever. So many feel unloved and alone. I know life can be hard and leave us feeling empty. But always know that if Christmas teaches us anything, it lets us know that we're not alone, we are loved deeply. If God had a refrigerator, your picture would be on it. God loves us. That's an amazing thought to think about. The God who created everything loves you and me and he wants relationship with us the third thing is god understands us you know whatever we experience in this life is understood by god he's been here he's been one of us he's walked in our shoes when we're feeling lonely that others are not treating us right or that temptation is strong or that we're struggling Jesus can say this, I know what it's like. His very name, Emmanuel, means God with us. He understands us. He's with us. He's been here. The fourth thing is God can do anything. Luke one thirty seven. for no word from God will ever fail. You know, the story of John the Baptist is an amazing miracle. You know, he... Elizabeth was barren, and yet Mary is told that Elizabeth is going to have a child. Her husband didn't believe, and so he wasn't able to speak until he was born, until John was born. Also amazing is the virgin birth of Jesus. A virgin birth is physically and naturally impossible. This is one of the most significant signs that God ever gave his people. Today in the church, we're often buried, bird, burdened down with so many religious things that we forget to believe that God is at work among us, that he's working everywhere around us. What is he doing? I don't know. How is he doing it through what I see? I don't know. How is he going to do it? I don't know. He just does it sometimes. And God says that he can use us to accomplish his will. He is going to use you and me. That's an amazing. Our God can do anything. And he wants to do anything. Ephesians 3, 20 and, 20, 20 and 21 says this. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine, according to his power that is work at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. He can do anything. Nothing is too big. Nothing is too small. He can do it all. The fifth thing is God keeps his promises. You know, the theme of Zechariah's song was that God keeps his promises to save and to be merciful to his people. Even with best intentions, humans are unreliable. We mess up at times. 
You know, I read about a grandmother who decided it was easier to write a check at Christmas for her grandchildren rather than go out and buy stuff. And we've all been there. But she wrote out all these checks and for them to put in their Christmas cards, and each card she carefully wrote a note to them, and then buy your own presents. And after, then sent them off. After Christmas was over and everything was, she was cleaning up after Christmas, she found the checks in a pile of papers on her desk. Every one of her beautiful gifts, Christmas cards, had in it, buy your own presents, written inside, but no check. You know, God's promises are not empty Christmas cards. They're not. God came looking for us. He saves us. He understands us. And God can do anything, but know this, God keeps his promises. He does. And he wants, and God wants to save us. You know, the angel confessed that this was the Messiah, a Savior has been born. No doubt the human race is in need of saving. It should be evident that God has gone to extravagant means, to eternal planning to save us us God isn't looking for an opportunity to squash us in fact he's had plenty of opportunity to do that God is looking for an opportunity to save us he wants us to live with him eternally as we think about Christmas we need to think about those things in 2nd Peter 3 9 it says the Lord is, is not slow in keeping his promises. As some understand slowness, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but in everyone to come to repentance. There was a while back I was talking with a man, and he was up in life, and he came to the point where he's like, uh, why can't I die? And, and so I was talking to him a little while and, and the Lord just prompted my heart and asked, Hey, have you forgiven your son? And, uh, he said, no. It says, do you ever think that the Lord might be wanting you to make things right with your son before he takes you? Because his word says, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. And and he sat and he thought about that for a little while. And he says, hey, Timmy, I think you may be right. And, you know, I think he made things right with his son. And then the Lord took him that next week. See, I think the Lord does things to help us to get things right. I think he didn't want to take him until he made things right because he wanted him to receive forgiveness. And the word is clear. If we don't forgive, we won't be forgiven. We need Christmas. We need it. The people around us need Christmas because they need to know when we feel lost that God came looking for you. He came looking for us. When we feel unloved, God loves us. God wants us to make things right. When you feel alone, God understands you. When you feel powerless, God can do anything. When everything seems like a lie, God keeps his promises. When we wonder why we're here, it's because God wants to save us. And so many times we don't understand what God wants to do in our life. And we just need to open up to him that he can do the work that needs to be done in us. You know, I'm so thankful that the Lord keeps working on me. And he works on me every day. Well, he wants to work on you too. 
And I just, I just believe that God is going to do some things in you and through you as you open up to him. Let me pray for you today. Father, we know that you love us, that you came. You came searching for each and every one of us. Even before we were ever a glimmer in our mama's eye, you came looking for us. You wanted relationship with us. And Lord, I thank you that you sent your son, that we could be with you, that we could have eternal life with you. Lord, I thank you that you want to be found, that I don't have to search and search and search, but Lord, I can find you. And Lord, I just thank you that even as you're found in my life, that there's others out there that you want to be found in. So Lord, if those who don't know you would find you, would, would open up to what you want to do, you are right there ready to touch and minister. Lord, I just believe for you to do great works in people. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you that you're touching us every day. Lord, it's in your name that we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. I just believe for God to do some great things in you as you open up to him. May he touch you. May he minister to you exactly how you need it. If you'd like to be involved here, I encourage you to come and be a part of the church here. We would love for you to come and share with us. If you want to give, you can go to our website, use our use PayPal, or you can use Bill Pay at your bank, or you can use the U.S. mail and send us some. We would love to hear from you. May God bless you. May you find his peace and strength during this Christmas and touch somebody else's life with the grace that God has given you. Amen.